I am only two days out from the Rise Live event and I already feel like I have upped my game. Hey there, welcome back to New Found Dream, where I help you create the life of your dreams. And today we are talking about Rise Live. I'm recording this video on Monday, May 4th, which is two days after the Rise Live event, but this video will not be posted until May 14th. The first time I heard Rachel Hollis speak, she was a guest on a podcast that I was listening to, and I immediately wanted to consume more from her. So I started listening to her podcast, and shortly after, I purchased and read her book, Girl, Wash Your Face. And when Girl, Stop Apologizing came out, I purchased and read that one too. I have been wanting to attend one of her events for a while now, so shortly after Rachel announced Rise Live, I purchased my ticket, and I am so glad I did. I danced, I shouted at my computer screen, and I took a lot of notes. It was an incredible day, and I really hope Rachel brings Rise back to Canada in 2021. Now that I have a taste of what her events are like, I can't wait to go in person. On Saturday, it was just me and my dog, sometimes sitting, sometimes standing, and sometimes dancing in front of my computer or TV. I felt energized and alive. And I believe those feelings would only be amplified if I was in a room with thousands of other people who felt the same way. The energy in that room would be contagious. The main topic for the event was courage. We are currently in unprecedented times and the speakers provided tools to help us get through it and come out the other side better and stronger than ever. If I was to sit here and share with you everything that I learned, we would probably be here all day. So instead, I am going to share with you some of my favorite takeaways from the event. It is okay to feel fear, but do not let fear have the final say. A courageous person is not a fearless person. Courage and fear are not mutually exclusive, just like pain and joy are not mutually exclusive. It is through fear that we find courage and it is through pain that we find joy. You need to move through your fear to find your courage. Courage is making the decision to take action and action is the antidote to fear. Now let's look at fear for a moment. Rachel drew a picture similar to the graphic that I'm about to share with you. The large circle is our worries and our fears. The small circle are the things that may actually happen, and the dot is what is most likely to happen. So much of what we are afraid of happening is never going to happen to us. So stop letting fear control your future. And the best way to do this is to work through your fear. I am going to share with you an exercise that I am currently working through. My biggest fear is... If that happens, then I will. And then, and then, and then. Continue this process until you have taken your power back from your fear. This exercise will help you create a roadmap of how you would overcome your biggest fear if it ever happened. That fear is not so scary when you have a plan for overcoming it. You can't believe in yourself if you don't know who you want to be first. Who do you need to be right now in order to become the person that you want to be? Acknowledge with grace and without shame where you are and where you need to go. Then make a plan to actually show up and do the work required that will get you to where you want to be. If I want to be a successful YouTuber, then I need to create content that people want to consume. In order to do this, I need to keep showing up consistently. I need to continue to post a new video each week and I also need to continue to work on improving my skills so that I can up level myself and my content. There are four roles that you can play in your life. Donald Miller blew my mind with the four types of story characters and how they relate to our lives. Essentially there are four types of story characters and we recognize each one within us. They are the victim, the villain, the hero, and the guide. The good news is that we get to choose which role we play in our own life, which means we have a great deal more control on how our life goes than many of us believe. The victim exists to make the hero look good and the villain look bad. They are not the lead character in the story. The victim may get rescued, but the story is not about them. There are real victims in this world. However, most people choose to play the victim. Let me repeat that. Most people choose to play the victim. 
They choose to play the victim because they are scared and they do not want to face reality. The victim does not grow and evolve. Unfortunately, people start to resent them for playing the victim role. Do not play the victim. The villain serves the purpose of making the hero look good and strong. The villain has experienced pain and they want others to feel their pain. The villain does not have any real friends. They have minions, people that are intimidated by them. The story never ends well for the villain. Do not be the villain. The hero is the lead character of the story. They have also experienced pain, but they want to protect others from that pain. The hero stands up, faces the challenge, and acts with courage. They do not know how it will work out, but they have faith that it will. The hero transforms and becomes a better version of themselves. They make something beautiful happen in the midst of chaos. Spend most of your time in the hero role. And finally, the guide. The guide helps the hero. They have been through what the hero is going through. The guide has spent some time in the hero role and they tap into that energy to help others. They understand how it works and they help others win. Your goal should be to become the guide. When Rachel was going through a challenging season in her life, she asked herself, what version of me could do this? And when she could not picture herself as the rock, she decided on a warrior the warrior version of her could get through it. Warriors train every day to go into a battle that they want to be a part of. A warrior expects to get beat up, and when they do, they use it as a sign for what areas that they need to work on. A warrior believes they are strong enough to get through it. So why not be a warrior? Rachel shared some tips that help her tap into her warrior energy, also known as warrior hacks. Number one, Challenge yourself physically for 10 minutes every day. Number two, when you get knocked down, stand back up and keep going. Number three, when you feel weak or low, move your body. And number four, and maybe the most important one, keep showing up. If you keep waiting for tomorrow, tomorrow will never come. And finally, believe in yourself. John C. Maxwell said, I know many people who succeed when no one else believes in them, but I don't know anyone who succeeds when they do not believe in themselves. So believe in yourself. Have courage, show up for yourself and others, be the hero and the guide. I could honestly sit here for hours and talk about Rise Live. It was such an incredible event. I highly recommend attending a Rise event if you are looking to up-level your life. Now for today's question. What was your biggest takeaway from today's video or the Rise Live event? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button because it helps support my channel. And remember to do one thing today that will help you create the life of your dreams. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. The victim? Villain! We're talking about the villain, not the victim. <laughs>